Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back. This is part three of the homemade red wine. And final part, we're gonna finish it up here. A couple things we gotta do. First thing is first, another siphon. I have a second carboy here. If you don't have two carboys, then you would have to siphon it back into a clean fermenter and then back and then clean the carboy and then put it back in. Now, while this is going on, a couple things I have to explain. I'm doing this the way that the instructions said to do it two years ago. Okay. Yesterday, I read the instructions that came with this kit, which incidentally got soaking wet because I spilt something on them. So anyway, but uh, here's the instructions. And these are different. These are different instructions than the ones that I read before. I'll just let those, those will dry. I don't need them anyway, but okay. So the way the instructions used to say to do it was to ferment it in the, in the primary for a week and then con convert it, siphon it into the secondary for a week. And then you're at the stage where we're at right now. Okay. So um, what they've done is they've simplified the instructions. So now it says, leave it in the primary for two weeks and then siphon it and then do this, what we're about to do. So the only difference really is that I had it in a primary for one week and in a secondary for one week. And the way they said to do it was just leave it in the primary for two weeks. So, okay. Next time I'll know. All right. But it doesn't matter. You just, you follow the instructions that come with the kit and that's what you need to do. This is just an outline how easy it is to do this. Okay. So this is, this is going to happen and I'm just going to look and see it's getting clearer. It's getting clearer. So we're going to let this go. You're always going to uh, lose a little bit at the bottom because again, what we're doing is we're taking it off another batch of sediment that's been created. This whole way through the wine is clearing slowly. All right. Now, after uh, this siphon is done, uh, what we're going to do is add two things. We're going to add sodium metabisulfite and potassium sorbate. Okay. Basically what those things do in a nutshell are help to preserve the wine. The sodium metabisulfite will kill any leftover yeast that's in the wine. Um, and stop the fermentation if there is any left, which there shouldn't be, but just, it just puts a cap on the whole thing. It's done. Okay. And also it helps prevent oxidation because we're going to be stirring this in a few minutes, very vigorously. And, um, the sodium metabisulfite will help to prevent oxygen from getting into the wine. It releases its own gases and it's all on the internet. You can read it. Not going to get into it in detail, but it, it has its own release of gases and it prevents oxygen from binding to the molecules and all that good stuff. If you're a chemist, you can put it down in the comments exactly how it works. Okay. So that's the sodium metabisulfite and the potassium sorbate that will prevent any further fermentation. So if any sugar is added to this after the fact, which we won't be doing in this stage or at this, with this particular wine, but this will prevent and preserve the wine from fermenting further. Supposing a yeast gets into it that finds some sugars that weren't fermented by the yeast that we put in here, that wild yeast might say, oh, I, you know, that's great, I, let's go. It might actually find some food and spoil the wine, and make it really bitter and bad. So that's what these are for. Those will be put in next after this. And then we have some uh, clearing agents. One of them goes in now and one of them goes in tomorrow. So I'll just leave all this set up. When this is video is done, we'll come back tomorrow and we'll finish this off. All right. And then I will put the bottling section at the end of this video as well, which is really simple. I mean, you just siphon it into bottles, but we'll talk about that. Okay. So I'll stop the cameras and I'll come back and uh, when this is done and I'll show you what to do next. All right. We've got a funny little looking thing back there attached to a drill that I'm going to use, but you don't have to use one of those but we'll talk about that in a minute. We'll be right back. Okay. That's done. 
I know. If you guys are some, a couple people are really not happy about the foam uh, from the sanitizer that I used. If you're that worried about it, go back to the previous video before this and read down in the comments to what people, some people put about the foam. It's actually a good thing. It's not harmful at all. I don't know how much, many foods that you've eaten. This is a little bit of a spill here. A lot of foods that you've already eaten that have it in it already. So it's not a big deal. Okay, so I got a little spill going on here, but this is fine. So we've got sodium, that's potassium. Nope, sodium metabisulfite. Potassium metabisulfite. I said it wrong before, I'm sorry. Potassium sorbate. So I, I apologize for saying it wrong earlier. This is potassium metabisulfite. Okay, so you add this. And this one got wet, but it's okay. It's lined with... Don't smell this stuff. <laughs> it's bad. So you just add it. Okay. Now... Along with that, and this is different than it used to be. They used to tell you to add these things separately, but now they're telling you to put them in together. Potassium sorbate. Slightly different thing, but it's all going together to make sure that this wine doesn't spoil. Now, some people might be concerned about preservatives. I don't really know whether this is considered a preservative or not. I guess it is, but it's harmless. I mean, it's not like monosodium sodium glutamate or whatever the hell that stuff. Okay, so now, now, it's time to stir this. But while we're stirring it, we're going to degas it. And that means we're going to extract any CO2 that's trapped in the wine. It's going to come out. But the, it's, all this is, it's, it's all good because we've added the... Uh, Potassium metabisulfite, which is going to protect the wine from oxidation. Well, what do we have here? We have a very powerful hammer drill <laughs> that we're going to use to stir this delicate wine. Yes, well, I have a cordless one, but somebody borrowed it, and I haven't got it back yet. So, um, yes, this has been sanitized. Okay, I'm just going to squeeze these together. Now, if you don't have a fancy thing like this, you would use a stir paddle like this. Uh, you would use this end of it. You would just stir it, but you'd have to stir it for quite a while to get all the gas out. You'd stir it, and the instructions will tell you to stir it every four hours for two days or something like that, or, you know, twice a day for four days or something like that, okay? But, or they might just say stir it for 10 minutes with, this, with a stir thing like that. But with this sucker, we can do this in just a few minutes, okay? So we're gonna degas the wine now. Reverse the drill. Oh yeah, baby, there you go. Gotta be careful. <laughs> okay. All right. We are done with, I did that for about four, three or four minutes. If you don't do this, not only will the wine have a slight caustic, you know, sort of carbonate -y kind of flavor to it. I'll just put that. There's no water in the sink, so we'll just put it back there. Um, but it'll also, it won't clear properly if it's, if it's got carbonation in it. So um, there it is. Now, um, now what they tell you to do, I would leave this usually for a couple of hours to let this foam settle. But I'm very sure this has been um, degassed. And I need a little pair of scissors. Okay, I dipped them in the sanitizer. And we're going to go with the, um, the Caselosol. This is the first clearing agent that goes in. You're just adding stuff to this. It's like making craft dinner, for Pete's sakes. 
this is carefully, you know, pour it in there. Now I always keep a few extra of these around in case uh, I spill it or drop it or something. But uh, yeah, now you grab your, you're done with the drill now, you just grab your stir stick and you just, you know, if you, if you didn't have the drill attachment, then you would have to sit and do this for quite a while. 10 minutes, maybe a couple times a day for a few days. So it's better if you have the drill. And that gets stirred in. And then this gets left for 24 hours. Um, I don't know the exact, like, relationship between that thing and this one that goes in 24 hours later. I'm not a chemist, but uh, together they will clear the wine. So I'm going to put on the airlock. It's right over here. Just re reattach the airlock that was on there from before. And this will sit um, for 24 hours. I, I might lift it back up onto here. And that way it's ready for bottling because you can siphon it in bottles. All right, so I'll be back in just a bit with um, the next stage and the bottling and all that. And we'll finish this up. And hopefully this has been uh, something that you guys will be able to enjoy. If you like wine, <clears throat> this is really a great way to make it at home. Okay, so I'll be right back. We'll see what happens next. Thanks. Okay, well, haha, sorry, I, uh, I started bottling this and I uh, realized I'm supposed to film this. So I set up my stuff and here we are. So it's been sitting for um, about five days since our last thing we did to it. And I took a sample. I just use um, one of these. This is, this is dirty because I just used it to do this. Um, so it's just a wine thief. You put your thumb over the end, you dip it in, you can pull out some wine and take a sample. And shine a flashlight through it and see how clear it is. Once it's clear, you can bottle it. Now, I have a very simple setup right here, and we're going to talk about how you can siphon your wine into bottles. We'll talk about the bottles briefly. But first, I want to talk about filtering. You might see in the instructions the mention of filtering. So you might wonder, well, what, what do you mean? What, what, what's, what do I have to filter my wine? No, you don't. First of all, the, the purpose of filtering it is to, not to clear it. You should never filter cloudy wine. You're just going to clog up your filter. The reason why some people say that you should filter your wine is it's, it's that they call it polishing. They say that it takes out some impurities or some, you know, yeast that's is still in there and it just cleans and polishes the wine and refines it. I've never done it, so I can't tell you whether it makes much of a difference or not. I know my mom, when she does her wine at the place that she does it at, they do filter it. And I've tasted our wine side by side, and apart from the fact that her wine's, you know, slightly different type than mine, I can't, I can't taste anything different. I mean, I just, it doesn't, to me, it's, to me, it's not worth the trouble. But that's not to say that you should, you know, listen to me on that one, because I'm not a huge wine connoisseur, okay? Some people can tell the difference, and some people can't. It's just like with MP3s and whatnot, you know, some people can hear the difference and some people can't. So it's up to you. You can try it. You can rent a filter and you get the pads and it's a little motor. It goes, brrr, you know, you got to filter it into another carboy. It takes a while and then you bottle it. So that's up to you. Okay. But you don't have to do it. This will clear on its own. And again, I'm sorry that I started this without you. Okay. So bottles, um, you can use traditional 750 milliliter bottles. However many ounces that is, you can figure that out and use corks to cork your bottles. I have a machine back there that you cork your bottles with. You can get one of those ones that you do this with. It's very easy. Uh, what you do is you soak your corks. Uh, actually, I'll show you the procedure of how to sanitize your wine bottles. Okay, so with clean bottles, um, <clears throat> you just, you get one of these things here. This is a great bottle washing, bottle sanitizing utensil. 
I have the caps for the bottles in the sanitizer. I'm using Star San. Uh, you could use sodium metabisulfite, but you would have to rinse that out. And this just works the same, and you don't have to rinse it out. So, clean bottle, and you take it and you put it on the bottle washer. And you press it down a few times. You want to make sure that the wine goes all the way up into the bottom of the bottle. I usually rotate it a few times. Yes, I'm wearing a GoPro, GoPro so you're going to see some movement. Okay, so that's how you do that. You just clean all your bottles. Yes, they have a little water in them because I just cleaned them. Sanitize them all. And that's how you do that. It's as simple as that. Now, if you were using corks, you would put your corks in the sanitizer. It helps to moisten them. They expand a little bit in the in the sanitizer, and then when you cork your bottles, if you're using corks, um, they will go in tightly, and then they will contract a little bit when they dry. Um, and just that's just the way you do it. So yeah, either way, but. You know, I'm using uh, one and a half liter bottles here. You, whatever you can get. If you're a purist and you want to use corks, then go ahead. But I'm using these things because these are convenient and this wine doesn't require aging. So this is great for me, right? So keep on going. I've got my normal auto siphon apparatus set up here. And what I, what you can do is just, um, I'll just do it. Okay, we'll do one. Let's get it going. Here we go. Give it a couple of pumps. And in it goes. Here she goes. So then you just have to watch it, okay? I mean, you gotta watch, keep an eye on it. You know, you're siphoning it, so you have to have the bottles lower than the carboy, right? So that gravity will do the thing. And you just, you grab your hose, and you sort of, like this, okay? And when the wine gets up to the, fill it from the bottom, make sure the hose is all the way to the bottom, but don't plug it on the bottom. And when the wine gets to be up to the top, this is why I've got it in a tray like this, because in case some of it spills. There, you can, I hope you can see that getting up there. And once it starts to get up there, you just, you just fold the hose. See how I was holding it with my finger in between? Just fold the hose. You take it out. My hands are clean. I've had sanitizer on them. And you start the next bottle. Put it all the way down to the bottom. Unfold. Okay? Now, once we get this bottle filled, I will show you an alternative, which is a little easier, a little more fiddly, but, you know, if you want to do it that way, uh, you can, so we'll wait till this bottle gets filled. I do it this way. This is how I do it. And when you're done filling the bottle, you can grab your cap It's and sanitizer and just screw it on. I'll just put it on loose for now. I'll go around later and tighten them all, make sure they're all good and tight. What you can do is get the proper attachments so that you can do what's called a bottle filler. Now, I have a bottle filler here that's been sanitized. And just to make sure, I'll just get grab. You put water through it, you put, not water, sanitizer through it. Make sure that everything gets touched with sanitizer inside and out. Okay, and I, I think you can figure out how to do that. It's pretty obvious. But if you want me to do a video on how to sanitize certain objects and, you know, things, let me know down in the comments and I'll gladly do it for you. Uh, this doesn't fit. So what I did... <laughs> Uh, this is a, this is a total seat of the pants thing. Is I got a a bigger piece of hose, and I sanitized it inside and out. And I'm just gonna. This is not how you would do it, okay? But this is just so that I can show you an alternate way of filling your bottles. So just ignore me for a moment. I'll get this down in there because it's a bigger diameter, right? And then I can attach my bottler. However it is that you get this to work, it's not, doesn't have to be as 
ridiculous as what I just did. But now what I've done is I've made it so that this is attached. Now what this does is, is some of you have seen this already, but I'm trying to, it, it's, it, it, nothing will come out until you press down. So you put this in the bottle, okay, and you press it down on the bottom. Now I have to start the siphon, of course, again, so we'll get that going. These auto siphons, I'll tell you. I haven't tried this yet. Okay, we'll just get another one there because we don't want any air in the in the line like that. There we go. But what this does is it um, allows you to stop the siphon at the end of the fill. But as you can see, it's not a tight fit, so I'm getting you know ridiculousness going on here. So that's something that I just didn't I didn't try it. But you can at least, if you have the proper connections, which I don't, you can leave it and just go and do something else for a couple of minutes while it's filling and then you can come back to it. Or you can be capping your last or, or corking your last bottle while this is going. Now this takes a long time because not as much wine goes through this little bottle filler. So it's completely up to you. Um, I find it the basic way is just much easier. As soon as it gets up to the very top, whoop, oh geez, you pull it out and see I've got leaks going on, but you pull it out and it'll stop. See, nothing will come out. It'll just drip like that. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the other method because obviously my apparatus here is ridiculous. So I'll stop the siphon. Okay, there. Obviously what you would do is you would get a proper size hose that fits your bottling wand properly but I didn't have that so I tried to makeshift it anyway so there we have it so you fill your bottles and I just do it this way again I just grab it I just hold it like this and when you know when it's ready to stop it I just stop it like that it's easy okay so and you can just start capping your bottles as you go along I'll come back in a minute when these are done and I'll have a glass of wine with you ah well why don't we try our product? This particular wine does not need to be aged according to the instructions. And I'm not using traditional corks and everything like that, but you guys can do what you, what you feel, what you want. I like these nice big bottles because you don't have to deal with as many of them. And the wine will keep once it's been opened. You just, it, it doesn't, it'll keep for a while, a week or more. So no worries. And if you're worried about it, just stick it in the fridge. But uh, this wine, uh, kind of wet red wine, I think in general needs to be served at room temperature or slightly chilled. And we don't do little half fast wine glasses in this house, sorry. <laughs> there we go. It's good for cooking with too, although it's kind of sad to see it evaporate like that. But anyway, I have done that. Beautiful, beautiful wine. And it's very clear. Oh, I don't have a flashlight. The main thing is, let's give it a whirl. Mm. You know, when the kids were younger, my boys, um, we had a little pool out back for them, a little foot and a half, you know, 12 inch diameter pool, 12, 12 foot diameter pool out there and, and uh, after the kids, you know, came inside and everything, I'd go out there by myself and just get in. It was a really hot summer and just bring myself out a nice glass of this wine and just sit in the pool and lean back and... Mm. Very nice. So if you live somewhere where wine or alcohol is expensive, this is what you do. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this series. Um, please like the video, subscribe, click that bell. Actually, the little bell below, just is a little off topic, but the little bell is becoming really important because if you don't ring that bell, you will not know when I put out another video. In the meantime, enjoy your homemade beer, wine, whatever else you indulge in. And don't forget to check out my vinyl channel. It's called Vinyl TV. I'll put a link down below here on the, uh, on the channel. So um, vinyl's coming back and you're going to want to have the experience at some point of getting a turntable and having a 
playing a good sounding vinyl record. They sound awesome. Cheers. Oh, oh, with, with a glass of wine, of course. <laughs> or beer. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you real soon. Take care.